Well, I've said it before, I'm gonna say it again. In Oklahoma, there's only two seasons. There's before the heat and there's after the heat. And we have definitely, I think, entered the second season. It's supposed to get up in the 90s today, Stuart. So we're gonna shoot some stuff before it gets too hot. But in addition to outside work, I'm gonna trim some boxwoods. I'm gonna show you some additional plants that I'm gonna be planting and plant some containers. But as a real surprise, we're gonna go over to my friend, John. John Terman's garden. We're going to take a walk around and see if he has any new blue additions in the way of garden ornaments, but also I know he has revived some of his planting areas. Um, so what do you say, Stuart? Let's get cracking before it really gets too hot. Indeed. Okay, Stuart, what do you say we trim some boxwood? In one of our previous videos, so many of you asked if I would show how I prune off winter burn off of my boxwood balls and also summer burn for later in the season when some of, of the outside foliage can, get, can really get scorched. But beforehand, I thought it might be valuable for me to show you, especially because it's getting ready to be Mother's Day and these make brilliant Mother's Day gifts ideas. My indispensable Dispensable things for when I prune boxwood. First and foremost are these iconic Barnell pruners. I love them. We'll put a link in the description below. They're a little bit pricey, but I promise you they are worth every cent. These little fine tips at the end make it really good for reaching down into the foliage of the boxwood. Secondly, the other iconic product that I always have shown on my, my YouTube channels for years and years, on channel four for years and years, is this works lightweight battery operated blower because after you prune, this helps you clean up any of those little leaves. Um, we will put a link below. And by the way, this would just make a brilliant Mother's Day gifts. You can go to lindavotter.com and you can just click on the Mother's Day links, Mother's Day gift ideas, and it will have the links to all of these products. Thirdly, and one that Stuart, I'm getting Susu for Mother's Day. Very Stuart's cool. mom, and that's this lightweight metal blue bara, uh, metal hose. It does not kink. Again, it's very lightweight. I am told it can warm up in the sun, so I'm going to make sure to take measures to mitigate that, but I absolutely love it so far. Stuart, should I spray you to hose you down it's, since it's, it's up to you since it's kind, since it's kind of warm <laughs> out but those are just three items that i think would be brilliant for mother's day and i have found them to just be indispensable working in the garden over the years if you are new to this channel and if you are you know what i'm gonna say please subscribe give us a thumbs up make sure to share with others that you think might like this content send them the link um, and that's that spiel now to the task at hand this box wood ball is one that I brought from the other house. It's been in the back until I in in storage kind of in boxwood inventory. Before I planted it here in this boxwood village along the porch. So you can see unlike these that were already here in the landscape this one has some brown tips. Stuart we might get a close-up of that okay. so you can really see how these tips have been burned. And probably also the last time that I pruned this, it might be that my pruners were not sharp enough. Now, the brown, uh, brown foliage on the outside of this could be much worse than it is. This is more just along the edge, but the same principle would hold true if the entire leaf was also browned and had winter burn. And all I'm going to do is just really the same practice that I would do if I were pruning it. And that's that I am just going along and I'm print pruning off the outside sections that are brown. So you can see here, see where that's really brown like that? Well, I'm not mm -hmm. getting a good, I'm not getting a good angle here. Sometimes it's more about the angle than it is about the shears there. Let's try this here. 
and sometimes I can reach in there and really just get the outer edge because these are rather large and I don't want to take off too much of their girth. Okay, look here, Stuart. This is a perfect example of what I'm talking about. So in here, there is a whole branch that's dead. Now I could use hand pruners and I could reach in there and prune that out. But with these sharp tips, it just works beautifully. I just reach in there with the tips and I prune them out. Well done. Well done, great dexterity. And then I'm just gonna proceed down the oval. And by the way, it's been my experience that when you are forming a boxwood ball, what really gives it that spherical shape is typically the foliage along the bottom. I don't know why this angle is, this one angle is messing with me, Stuart, but it kind of is. Here we go. That's a pretty dramatic clip right there. You can see how that tip can just sneak in there underneath those branches? I can see it better now, yeah. Can you see that? And remember that pruning encourages bushiness. So this will encourage this to flush out all in new growth. Not unlike these in the foreground, which have all sorts of new growth on them. Again, because those didn't need to get established. Those had been in this landscape previously and planted by the former owners. So here you can see I can reach in again there. You have to do a little bit, put in a little bit more elbow grease to get those out. And then if it breaks the form, I just clip it off again. Stuart, is that making sense? I think so. I'm really working in the glare of the sun today. We attempted to do this earlier, and then we had a couple technical difficulties. Sent Stuart to three stores. Okay, so there you go. And I can come back a little bit later when the light isn't quite so harsh, because not only is it maybe hard for you to see, but it's kind of hard for me to see too um, when I'm staring right into that sun. There is another dead branch right there that I'm gonna go for, cause I've gotta kinda scratch that itch. You should have, I guess, done it before and after, Stuart. I think they kinda got to see it. Yeah, okay. There. The other additional thing that I like about reaching down into the ball into the, um, the center of the boxwood ball is because that allows light to penetrate into the shrub. And then you're not just getting like a veneer of foliage and boxwood leaves. You are allowing light to get in there so the interior puts out some foliage too. So does that give people an idea? I think so. Of how you clip off any kind of dead wood. And obviously on some, it's gonna be more severe on one side or the other. And so all you can do is either root prune and take the plant out, or you can just try to work with it and reestablish its form over time. And typically, unless, unless the plant is just really stressed and almost dead and almost completely brown, I just leave it in place to recover on its own and give it a little extra TLC. And 
to one more thing before I go inside with today's harvest. Want to give you all a heads up that on May 21st at 2 o'clock Central Standard Time, we're going to do our next LV Live. We'll be giving away a pair of my favorite, one of my favorite brands of boots, high C boots. So be there or be square. And also, of course, if you are not already a subscriber, please hit that subscribe button. Gives us uh, a big enthusiastic <laughs> thumbs up comment below and also make sure that if you know of others who might enjoy this kind of, of gardening content make sure to share with them well what do you say we plant up some containers starting with the concrete urns that are on the front steps coming up to my front porch it's time to get rid of those cool season annuals the pansies and the violas and put in some things that can really take the summer heat and summer sun Oh, but let me point out, before we get started, I want to point out this cool little uh, storage unit that I've got here on the social patio. This can be used as an ottoman, it can be used as a coffee table, it can be used for a variety of different purposes, and in my case right now, I've just got it as a little storage device. I've got some insecticidal soap in there and some other things. So I'm gonna grab my favorite garden gloves, Cool Jobs, we'll make sure to put a link below. But also I'm grabbing some sunscreen. So if I haven't already put it on inside, then I definitely wanna remember to put it on outside and I'm gonna spray this away from Stuart. <laughs> because I think I almost choked him earlier. We had to cut and start again. I thought he swallowed a bug. Okay. So I'm really, get the back of your neck and ears. And if you're balding, the top of your head. But I always, I slather on a bunch before I come out on my face and on my neck. Okay, so I'm gonna put that back in there. I've got my garden gloves. We'll see how well Stuart can walk oh, backwards. Check it out. It's good. And, like a, like a pro. and now stop. <laughs> just stop and let's get these things planted so i you may recall that i went to farmer's market a while back before planting the window box and i got some annuals and again i'm relying more heavily on annuals this year because i'm waiting for stuff to fill in i went to ace hardware primarily because it was right up the street from me. So I try to shop at independent nurseries where I can, but all of those tend to be kind of far out and sometimes I have to go for convenience. So I got these at Ace Hardware and the ingredients for these urns, I love the way this is both white and yellow. So it's in my color palette and will, I think, harmonize nicely with what's in the window box. So this is called Heartland White, and I got a whole flat of that. I also got, let's see, this is some proven winners. This is an unusual color and kind of hard to find. So I bought some of it. This is in Luscious Grape. Let and me, I love, let me show that tag. yeah, let me show you the tag. And I love Lantana because it not only is so, so tough, can handle the heat, but also the butterflies and the pollinators just absolutely love it. I've got some of this Diamond Frost Euphorbia. I'm I may or may not put that in this composition. I'm gonna kind of decide that as I proceed. I wanted something to harmonize with what I've got in the window box. And you may recall that I put a whole Ooh. hanging basket of scaviola or AKA fan flower in the front window box. So I'm gonna repeat that with just some four inch pots. And I'm gonna have that in here too. And I think that purple and yellow and white combo is gonna be gorgeous. And then because I also want to infuse some gray, I think I'm gonna add some of this helichrysum, which is gray and trailing. And I think from a design standpoint, one thing that kind of always bothered me about these urns, even though I love the impact of the color, is they just looked a little bit, oh, I don't know, a little bit prudish, <laughs> a little too formulaic because nothing really cascaded over the side. So I'm gonna take out the pansies and the violas and I've already harvested the Swiss chard 
and brought some of it inside. I did that on our Wednesday walkabout. And I'll salvage some of this depending on, but look at, look at how root bound that is. So I'm going to take that out. That will go in my compost tumbler in the back a little bit later. I'll loosen up this soil and kind of look at the quality. See, look at that. That's really root bound. So I'm going to go ahead and take that out. And I got new soil. I'll leave a little bit in there because none of it is diseased or has any kind of pests. Um, and I'm going to use just some moisture control miracle Grow. Now, I typically, again, I like to use things that are, are organic, but I'm not going to be really slavish about it because I just don't have that luxury. A lot of times I just have to go with what I can find, and it depends on what they have where I am because so much of it is about convenience for me. The other reason is sometimes this is one of the things Hubs doesn't help me in the garden, but he runs great errands. And so I'll ask him to pick up a couple of pots of uh, bags of potting soil, and sometimes it's whatever he can find. So I try not to be too particular on that score. So let's do this. I'm going to just, again, this soil I think is going to be okay. The rest will be fresh soil, and it's not going to take a whole lot. And typically, you'll notice these will not have drip irrigation in them because normally I find I tend to be, and this isn't a good thing, but I tend to be an overwaterer. So on my container plants that need more water, and these aren't huge, ideally these pots would be larger because the larger they are, the less frequently I have to water them. But, um, but I know that I'm going to be watering these a lot, and so I just don't think a drip would do it. Plus, I don't want any drip lines coming up over the top or even through the bottom because I might want to change these out and I want flexibility. Okay, so I've got my components here. So this is what I'm going to do. I am going to, I think, let's see. I want these to be positioned so they are just a little bit lower than the brim of the pot. That way, when I water it, it won't spill out. That said, because I know there's going to be some settling of the soil, I'm going to add a little bit more. Now, this miracle Grow already has some, some fertilizer in it, so I'm not going to add any time release in it. I could add some espoma biotone or whatever, but these are one of the few things that I will frequently use a liquid fertilizer on. And again, because it's in a container, I'm not, I'm not quite so concerned about being 100% organic. I do what I can, but I am not an absolutist about it. So I'm gonna put the lantana in place. Let's see where I want it to be. And normally, it's important for me to say that normally I don't really like mixed containers that much. I tend to like them much better where all of one thing would be in one pot and then I would have another pot all of one thing and then a third pot all of another plant. But this one, because all of these echo what's in the window box, I think it will still be effective and I think it will be beautiful. So that's what I'm gonna go with. And I am just nestling these in place carefully positioning any of the tendrils to spill out over the side. So the orientation on these is kind of important. And then, of course, Stuart, you're down on your knees, aren't you? Uh, well, I had one of those situations where you put your knee down on the concrete and managed to get your and ouch, a, a yeah. pebble right between right. the Oh, that and hurts. The <laughs> we suffer for our art, don't we? We suffer. I don't think for the camera art. noticed. I don't, I don't think you'd be able to tell. It just hurt. That's it all. just hurt. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to put another lantana in. It's a good shot, though. 
And the difference between what I had before and this composition is these will grow, get profuse, and just spill out everywhere. So the size of them and the statement that they make will be far more pronounced than the very tightly clipped profile. Stuart, if you don't mind showing them the pansies down there. Why don't you, uh, if I'm gonna go down there. Okay, do I need to snap you down? Okay, well, okay, I, ca I can't snap very well in my gloves, but there you go. One more time. So Stuart, those pansies are what I was talking about. And see how their profile is just really tight. And I want the profile of these, the composition in totality to be much larger and much more of a statement. So what I'm gonna do, I think, is I'm gonna plant some of this diamond frost euphorbia, which will look like a little cloud that consumes the pots and every all the contents of the pots. I'm gonna put that in the middle. So you see how I'm just placing them all in their pots inside the container. This is kind of a gardening hack. Now again, you need to use your imagination of what this will look like when these are full and spilling out all over the place. So right now, I make sure that I'm gonna have pretty much, I don't have to be extremely fastidious about making sure that they're all identical. In other words, the same number of lantana, the same number of fan flower. I do wanna make sure that I have enough so that each component pretty much has the same, has the same ingredients. So now notice, I am not taking them out of their plastic pots yet. I am just filling in around the perimeter of the pots. See here what I'm doing? Just filling in around the edges. And yes, I am being messy, but that's what we have brooms and blowers for. That's the garden life. That's the garden life. Just like my t-shirt. And if you guys want this t-shirt, it is so comfortable and I love the color. Um, they're in the, you can see them below, can't they, Stuart? Yeah, they should. And if they, some won't show the exact shirt that you're wearing below, but they can click on that whole area and it will take yeah, them to Yeah, just click on the area and available. you can design your own. Well, you can pick, yeah, what kind of shirt yeah. it goes on. Yeah, what color, what size. And actually, I got this one in a small and I kind of, wish I would have gotten it in a medium because they do shrink a little bit. So just all of the voids around. Oh, the back looks good too. Let me show them the back real quick. Okay. All of the voids that are around the pots. And I'm really making sure that I'm packing it in fairly tightly because once it rains and with continued watering, there is going to be some settling. Now the other thing is, another reason that you will have to, I'll have to fertilize these more is because the more you water, the greater the nutrients leach out of the soil. And these are gonna be watered a lot. So I will also be feeding them more heavily. Never would have thought of that. It's twoo, it's twoo, Stuart. It's twoo, it's twoo. Okay, now, here is kind of the fun part. Make sure I've got them all on each side. See, there's a little void I almost missed there. You'd have found it. I would have found it. I have total confidence in and you. And doing it on a gorgeous day like today is just a gift from the gods. Especially when I can hear little neighborhood kids on the street swinging and playing outside. It's a calm day though, not a lot of people driving by, blowing the stop signs. I can hear the dog nails hitting the concrete as it walks over there. Really? It's very, very calm. Wow, it's very calm. 
And for those of you who followed me for a while in this evolution of the garden, you know that it can get really windy up here. It's not always this way. And by the way, we are going to be putting up a marathon, a video marathon of the evolution and the progress of the garden, the cottage garden on the hill. Okay, so look here, Stuart. Now, if this works as I imagine, I can lift this out. You already have a hole And there. look there, I've already got a hole there. Jeez. Perfectly sized, with the exception that, see how root bound this is? I'm gonna torture it a little bit. I am a messy. This is what you used to bang the yeah, bang against the I used the to walls. bang it against the wall, but yeah. I don't have a wall and so what, I'm going to loosen this up because I don't want these roots to grow around in circles. And yes, I am a messy gardener. If you have followed me for any length of time, you know that about me, and I don't apologize for it. I would it love to see it because it, it's one of the ways I can I can get my work done. Okay, this one did I had already. Is there such a thing as a clean gardener? Oh sure, sure. There's people that are very tidy about everything they do, but I am not. <laughs> I'm not one of them. Okay, look here, Stuart. See over here, I have a void right there and I can plant this wonderful helichrysum because oh, I love the one. gay kind of Mediterranean vibe it gets things. It too is tough. Okay, I've got another one over here. And boy, was I, I, you should have heard me, Stuart, when I was at the hardware store and I found this color, I just squealed. I don't doubt it. <laughs> Fortunately, there wasn't anyone around to, no to cameras hear nearby. me. Yeah, because that would have been slightly embarrassing. Okay, now for my last one. I had already taken, this is the Diamond Frost Euphorbia. You talk about a tough annual that can handle the heat along with things like pentas and lantana and fan flower. I just love that. I just love that, the simple elegance of that and how easily it drops into place. I'm going to push this down because I don't want any air pockets. How long have you known that trick? Did you garden for a while without knowing Oh, yeah. That? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and you know what? Periodically, I still need to be reminded of it because I'm old. Hey, it happens. <laughs> and I have memory issues. We don't have hard drives for brains. No, and sometimes, of course, I'm dividing up plants um, and, and this procedure doesn't work as beautifully, but I think this is gonna be simply fabulous, darling. I'm gonna pinch off, see, I'm, I deadhead it on our Wednesday walkabout and I'm gonna deadhead these as I plant them. We should shoot here more often, it's really pretty. Yeah, it is, it's a pretty spot, isn't it? and it's still not too hot in the day. I try not to break tendrils as I'm planting them, but sometimes I do, and if I do, I'll just pinch those off. Here's my question of the day. Lantana has a very distinctive smell, and not all colors and varieties smell the same. There's one that has just a fabulous, almost tropical citrus scent to it. This doesn't really it's got a pungency that I isn't maybe as pleasant as lavender, but I but is still to me seems to be in that same family. So my question of the day is, do you like the scent the scent of lantana or not so much? And if you're a lantana lantana lover lantana lantana <laughs> lover like moi, what color is your favorite? I have found that even though I love the purples and the whites. The more pastel colors, they don't seem to bloom in as great a profusion sometimes as the yellows and some of those other colors. So I am going to clean up a bit as I go. And then I'm getting ready to plant this pot. Now this one has no soil in it whatsoever. And yes, there's probably ergonomically a better way I could do this, but I'm pointing towards the camera. <laughs> I am pointing towards the camera. So I'm putting in a little bit down in here. I'll get you a little bit of angle. And by right the there. way, potting soil is not the same as garden soil. 
So garden soil, I wouldn't, for example, dig up some stuff from my garden and put in here for a number of different reasons. So like I say, you can make your own, but I say why bother? I don't use that much potting medium, and for me, it's just more convenient. And the older I get and the less time I have, the more crucial convenience is to me when I want to get a lot of things done, particularly if you're starting a new garden. So I am going to basically just copy what I did on the other side. Mm -hmm. Is that? That's a yellow one. So you can even see here, see how long these tendrils get and the flowers are smaller than on your typical. Well, even on, even on that other color of lantana, it blooms more profusely than this. But this does have a liveliness to it that I really love and a bouncing kind of floating quality, which I told you was one of the elements the design elements and the thematics I wanted to have for the cottage. So this has a romantic floating quality to it that I really like. You want to speed them through this part? Let's speed them through, Stuart. We've already made them suffer through the original planting, so I'll do this one rather quickly. What do you say? Let's do it. the second one planted and as a reminder let's review the recipe for this container garden Oops, I sometimes I, I sometimes <laughs> am hesitant to to give you guys specific varieties of some things because I know it's very hard quite often to find that specific variety and I don't want you to be constrained by that or frustrated by that just try to go with anything that is similar, whether it's exactly the same plant or it's, um, or it's a different plant or it's the same plant in a slightly different color. Because I, I, I basically, my MO is when I go shopping for plants, it's about convenience and what I can find to get the qualities that I'm looking for. And that's why I often put words rather than the names of plants to what I'm trying to create, but I digress. So let's talk about what's in this composition. So the lantana was Heartland White okay. and Luscious Grape. Hold there for one. Okay. okay. <laughs> the center was Euphorbia. Okay. Is that the Euphorbia? Yes. Then I had scaviola, or fanflower, and then lastly, let me see if I can find a tag, Stuart. Which one? Uh, the helichrysum. See, I should have been more organized, but this is the helichrysum. It may not have even had a tag in the center. Or no, it did have a tag because I think I showed it earlier. As, again, I'm not a very organized gardener, but I think that the composition is going to be beautiful. And I would say within a month's time, this will double in size. Probably in a couple weeks time, it will double in size. And I think it'll be really beautiful. Now, if I wanted to add, and I've got enough going on. I don't wanna, <laughs> I don't wanna add any, any more elements. It's already looking a little bit tchotchke. Um, but if I wanted to later on, or if I was having guests and entertaining, I could put some torchers in here to light the passage or even some battery operated lights, um, very classy looking ones that I could put in there 
to frame the way and illuminate the entrance to the front porch. But for right now, they're going to look more understated and not as dramatic as these pansies because they have to, they have to grow and flower. But again, always, my operating principle is to get them in before the heat because there's only two seasons here. There's before the heat and there is after the heat. One more question, comment that I wanted to address. So many of you have said, oh, you should put a Japanese maple here or there on the corner. And I agree from a design standpoint, oh my gosh, that would be absolutely breathtaking. But from a pragmatic standpoint, they would fry like a French fry. I promise you, there's just no way they could handle this sun. However, if you look across the street, Stuart, I think we can maybe do it just to get a glimpse of some gorgeous in the op facing in the opposite direction some gorgeous purple uh, Japanese maples blood good in a different color palette so what does that tell me that tells me I can have them in the back mm -hmm. but I can't have them in the front so it's kind of know thy garden now I still need to do some pruning on the boxwood but Stuart we're going to save that for another segment so thank you guys for hanging out with me and you know let me know your comments if you like this this recipe and if you might in some way try to replicate it at your home well, I have been looking forward to this for such a long time. <laughs> I'm here with my friend and buddy, John Terman. Recently, you've been over at my house. I have. You have. It's been great fun over there. Yes. But now I am at your house in your magnificent garden. That has changed pretty dramatically since last time I was here. It probably feels that way to you. It doesn't so much to me in some ways, but right. it's been almost two years since you were here. Two years, so, and, and how many weather events? Um, at least, well, you were here right after a huge one, right. which we've been kind of working on trying yeah. to resolve, and it's taken a while to do that. So then I think we had two smaller ones after that. So, <laughs> and, well, th and then just events where, where trees are gone and yeah. more, more sun and all in that. In other so. words, gardening in Oklahoma but that accounts for a lot of the changes that you made yes. because as I recall, it was pretty spectacular last time we were here. And that is a reminder to you guys, if you wanna do something really fun, go back and look at the initial, we'll put a link below of the, of the initial tour that we took over here at John's Garden. And then you can kind of compare it to today's video and see how yeah. things have changed. I, for one, am extremely envious because, you know, I left my mature garden uh -huh. for a new <laughs> garden and it is this kind of lushness and maturity that well, I am just I'm, desperate to recapture. I'm glad you're seeing that because I see at your garden all these new things that look so crisp and perfect and I look around here and see the holes and, well, you know, the places where things need, still need to be fixed and well, all that. Well, so. it could not look any uh, better, but you know what, let's walk around. But one thing that definitely has not changed and that is, I would describe you as a maximalist gardener. Yes. <laughs> and and for those of you new to this channel, John is an interior designer, so that he's been over at my house helping. But the other element that has not changed is your passion for blue and That's, blue and white. That is white. true. In, Still love In all your that. attire <laughs> and in all of your indoor and outdoor appointments. Okay, yeah. so, so let's start here. And Stuart, I want to give them a vantage point. So we are just, I love the way you have multiple seating areas so that now that we have gotten up, this is a charming little area where we were just sitting. It's got some, yeah, hold on, hold on, Stuart. Uh, it's got a couple of metal chairs with cushions. The lovely thing about this is it's right outside one of your doors and it's in the shade. It is. And it's kind of gives this kind of an evergreen loggia mm -hmm. a feel to different areas of your garden because I would still call this kind of a small garden. Oh, it is very much a small garden, I think. But right here especially, you get this... LA kind uh -huh. of effect, yes. which I think is really nice. And what I was sitting here the other day in the chair over there and realized, I'm not sure why we never put something right at the end of that as a focal point. Yeah, on so an axis. I see yeah. something new that needs to happen. That needs so, to be done. Well, that gives uh, you something to right. play with. 
So and the other thing is, is from this vantage point in the center, I think you can really clearly see those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. But it also makes you very much feel as if you're in a garden with different garden rooms. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, And it, this is kind of like a hallway. And as we talked before, I, that's my, kind of my philosophy is my interior comes outside and we try to create a similar idea with rooms and with accessories. Well, and, and the nice thing all is that sort of stuff. too, John, is you can move with the sun. Yes, So you can. like, it's pretty warm today. We were talking about how warm and humid it is. You just got back from the farmer's market. Um, it's supposed to get up in the 90s, mm -hmm. but under here, it's just It's delightful. really lovely, isn't it? Yeah. And there's a, there's a nice little breeze. Uh -huh. Okay, so you've got so much of, and so just be on the lookout for it, all of you, so much of your blue glazed pottery and I'm going to have to get some seed from you of, of your purple columbine. That sounds so I, well. I, I think I bought three plants two years ago. And it, and really it has did just well. come all up in here. Yeah, so. I had tons of it at my other house, and I can't remember if, I, if I've got seed. It's yeah. probably in a box probably somewhere, somewhere, still waiting right, to be unpacked. So. And then you've got all sorts of tons of hostas, none of which yet yeah, looks in any way bedraggled well, or when you go out where the hail was <laughs> you're well let's see just focus but then that on, one that on one that this. one was protected yes it's absolutely uh, beautiful this is a new bottle bouquet no nope. has it just it been was relocated there. was nope. it there it was really there okay i guess it really was so stewart dubbed that gave it yes, he did. the moniker <laughs> bottle bouquets and there you have very much just a green and a blue bottle mm -hmm. motif just, Which I'm still I, I still like to collect bottles because I like to drink wine and vodka and all the things that come in those pretty bottles. So <laughs> yes, I hear you. I hear you, my friend. Yes. Oh, I see something familiar to me. Oh. What of my QVC Kobo yes. baskets? Those are great. I bought three, and I keep one kind of near each watering place. I know. And this is what happens yeah, with them. And, and they're, they're just perfect. Yeah, they're perfect for yeah, this because they really they're are. waterproof. Water goes th right through I, well, them. That, weatherproof. I, I find that I will pull things knowing I have a place to drop it. Right, yeah, because it's right, right it around, there, and so. it's lightweight. Yeah, very lightweight. lightweight. So, so great. okay, this is just an explosion of blue. I did dress you did. appropriately <laughs> you did. to match my surroundings. What do you call this area? I just call it the East Porch. The um, East Porch, I okay. Do. Um, but, it, and as we talked about rooms, this really is a room. I think it really has that feeling. And, yeah. and when you're inside the house, you feel like you're looking out into another room. So, yes. Um, and so I think so many people asked you, so we might as well share it again, the color of this blue. Oh, I don't remember. I'll have to look I, you, again. We looked it up and now <laughs> we don't remember so again. It's, it's in the comments of that first video. But I'll it? Do, okay, I'll, okay. When, you, when you post this one, I'll post it again. I'll post so, it again. But really look at, you know, it just is such a brilliant segue from your interior mm -hmm. to the outside with your throw pillows, your coasters, your poofs, <laughs> <laughs> um, all of your, for lack of a better word, just regalia that you have just, up along this, this wall. Now refresh my memory, didn't you have to do some restorative work to the adobe and the Not, the not this wall, it was the front wall. The front wall, okay. We had an issue with and had to, um, yes, bury a lot of dollars, as I call it, and do some <laughs> restoration work. So Yes, um, very unfun way yeah, to spend money. Yeah, it is not a fun money. way. But so, I kind of like how it turned out out there, so we'll see Yeah, that. no, it looks great. Yeah. So describe kind of your muse for this entire area and how it has changed since the last time and what dictated those changes. Well, um, the again, we're in one room here. You have another room this direction, which is to the south. And I always call this the bamboo court because of this bamboo that grows uh -huh. along the wall over here. And there had been two very large um, fetinias in this position, almost in the positions of where these hollies are now, that had been um, limbed up and they really were trees, small trees. Mm -hmm. So we lost both of those um, two years ago. And um, when you were here last time, we hadn't replaced anything yet. So the hollies came in. It was a great experience. You would have loved this. They had to, they laid um, rubber mats across the front yard and drove a great big forklift over here to lift these over the wall because oh there was no way to get in um, with Would them. So yeah, it track. was really quite a quite a production. Um, and my hope is that these grow, um, I want them to be more freeform looking and create to create lots of shade, of course, we'd mm -hmm. love that. Mm -hmm. um, and just kind of protect this inner room right. uh, from the outer one, so. And give um, you some privacy. Yes, absolutely. And it's done some already, but. 
So I, I'm going to guess our friend Roger probably helped you. With John and Roger this. helped with this. Yes. There's no way I could have pulled that off. Yes. And, and this is one of those places where we had to really, um, you know, we had to buy something mature. Mm -hmm. um, again, at, at my age, I can't start with a little plant. And, <laughs> I, and I was just sick about losing what we had lost. So it yeah. was worth doing that. Right. And of course, not only were the plants something, but then that whole installation process, it was really, it's stressful. It, it was really something. It was very stressful, but I think successful now. Yes. And, um, Oh, there it is. It's noon in Oklahoma yes. City. So. All of my followers know this now. It's it's our emergency alert system mm -hmm. that if you live in Oklahoma, <laughs> we've got lots of emergencies. Yes, we do. Okay, Stuart, I've had enough of this. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that was long. That was a long <laughs> yes, one. It was. I guess it's the confluence of a number of different fires since you, you were at the epicenter. Yes. The epicenter. Be safe. Yes, be we safe. <laughs> Okay, back to where we were. We're talking. Let me just breathe for a moment. Uh, so your courtyard is largely the result of weather events, but it, it just it definitely putting in the mature hollies was the right was. thing to do. Right. And, and of course, we have a lot more sun now than we did. So surprisingly, the maple has done okay. That was totally under that. That surprises Under a petunia before. And it really has done a fine. And, it's, and, and even in the hot summer, it starts getting a little fried, but you know, it's gonna be okay, I think. Um, but then just up in here, we get a lot more sun. So I'm trying some new things. Um, this is, I'm gonna call it Rose of Sharon, but I can't remember what its real name is. So that was something we're gonna try this year to see if we can get some blooms and hopefully it'll grow out right. a little bit, create a little more shade. Yeah. I have a question um, on this. Uh -huh. The sun causes the red? Yes. That is, I've yeah, never so noticed that. The before. part that's in the shade stays darker green. And then when it gets the sun on it, it turns red. That is beautiful. They probably can't hear me, so somebody tell them what I asked. Okay, yeah. So Stuart just asked if it was the sun that made it turn green. And, it makes it turn red. It may turn red, yes. rather. And the green that's in the shade is because... It stays green. Yeah. Okay. Now, now okay, now this is a tip, though. <laughs> this is a tip. That probably, if you had just designed this and you wanted to grow a Japanese maple here, to it. you wouldn't have been able to do <laughs> yeah. it because it wasn't already established. Right. The only reason it can really handle this exposure is because it was well established, yes. it was mature, and it, and I, and it was I, older and wiser. That's probably 20 years old. That's yeah. one of the first things I stuck in under those other trees. And yeah. one of the problems I have out here, it's really hard to plant things in the ground. So partly because of this bamboo, which comes up everywhere, constant. Uh, it, on this it, side of the fence, it's really good though. It only stays on this side, but there's so many roots and things in here. And then yeah. of course those Fatinia roots are still in here. Yeah. So that dictated the placement of the hollies where they were able to dig. So anyway, it's hard to do. So that's why I use a lot of these pots and just sort of sit them mm -hmm. in the beds. Um, Another great tip, if you if you really can't dig in the dirt right. for whatever reason, um, then definitely and make like container that gardens. big box, whatever there is in a big pot, believe it or not, and has well, been there for a long it, time. Yes. Yeah. And it looks, it looks great. And he seems to be happy. What variety is this golden beauty over here, which looks so fabulous with your blue furniture? That would be the Lowe's variety. I don't know what I bought. The Lowe's variety, some <laughs> yes. kind of gold, um, gold. It is one of those gold, it's called golden something, I don't golden remember. Golden juniper, yeah, we'll uh, call it golden yeah. juniper. So, and then later, uh, this ground cover is plumbago, so we'll get some purpley blue blooms going in here, which look really nice against all these greens. So the nice thing is though, even though right now it's a little bit warm in the morning or when you're just a little bit chilled and you've got that sun mm -hmm. coming down, the perfect place to have coffee. It is. And then of course in the evening, this is in the shade. So it's really nice out here in the evening. We have dinner out here fairly often. Yeah, it's, um, it's just if, lovely. If it's not too windy. So. I have to ask, this furniture is brilliant. Where'd you get it? So that's Amazon. And I, uh, the company was called, what is this called? Flash Furniture or something like that? But I think the actual brand is Crosley. Crosley. Did um, you get it very long ago? A um, couple of years ago. I okay. think they're still available though. I think okay, so I will definitely try to put a link yeah. to this because uh, this would make a brilliant Mother's Day gift. So I, today I'm in the show. I'm just your, really right. sharing Mother's Day gifts ideas. Uh -huh. So then that's the chairs. The table came with um, those little French bistro chairs and they were Home Depot. Um, like four or but, five years but ago, this but the a, colors seem to be consistent. Yes. I don't know if the same person made them all. Yes, and, um, and the pads, did you get those, those separately? Are at home or someplace, yeah. you know, all, all yep. fairly inexpensive things. Yeah. Um, I've learned that so many things outside don't last forever mm -hmm. and it, it doesn't matter how much you pay for it, they still don't last. <laughs> they still don't so, last and you can't really expect so you might them as to, well, so you might right. as well be thrifty at Absolutely. the beginning. Yeah, but um, this, this has aged very well. In fact, I'm not seeing, there's a little bit of fading from it, but not much, so. 
Well, and speaking of thrifty, this is, if you could find something at a thrift store that was already pre-aged and modeling the metal would still be kind of cool. Yeah, it would be, it would be, yeah, And absolutely. You've, you've got that kind of vintage thing going. Okay, well, uh -huh. this is absolutely spectacular. Now, if, Stuart, if you don't mind kind of getting this long view, and of course, you have all of your rose rocks and your crystals, and you know you've kind of gotten me into, I'm, I'm, I'm not, quite to the extent you are, <laughs> but I am getting into blue. You, okay. you know that I've tried to right. incorporate you more have to of add it a little more blue. Yes, yeah, in, in my house. I'm trying to yeah. mix it up as I, as I get older, but look at this beautiful vista. And this is the thing that judicious pruning can do for you. And that is just, and by the way, this effect I was told is called a lion's tail. Really? Where you really prune out the interior and then the fluff that. is mostly on the ends and you let the lion tail get really okay. long because it's so wonderful. This creates an overhead uh -huh. shady passage. It really does. Well, you taught me something. I mean, I, I did that on purpose, but I didn't know that it was what a thing. Was so, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, so much of gardening is instinctive, well, isn't it? And that's especially me because I'm not, I'm, you know, I don't have well, a lot of education. Well, but you're a designer, so right. you've got you know, good um, composition skills. And well, let's face it, we're both, we're both pretend garden designers and okay. designer because well, we're self-taught. Well, I still think you're a different level than I am. So, well, I, I, uh, I would include you in the interior uh, category. So this is just beautiful flagstone um, and describe just how this came to be. I wish I had an answer for that. Obviously, we had we needed to get paths in here going to this is the kitchen door. So mm -hmm. we needed to get that way. Um, you needed to get back through here. Initially, this brick wall, that was a raised bed that was here when I bought the house. Mm -hmm. And instead of tearing all that out when we created the addition to the house, we left it. And so it's just sort of started doing these paths through it and it creates up and down things. Not sure how that's going to work in 10 years. Yeah, as we as <laughs> you really have to be careful walking age. through here. Right. Um, but there are lots of levels and, and lots of places to fall. Um, so far, I haven't done that. But, um, but and, then, it, and then this at one point had a lot of shade. And so as the uh, junipers are gone from the neighbor's yard now, so we get uh -huh. so much more sun in here in the morning. So I'm not really sure how this is going to work. This will be the first year. Well, I'm hoping that again, the maples are established. They've uh -huh. been here several years. Some of these other things, I've changed some things to more boxwood and um, the spirea, which can handle more sun. And believe it or not, my hydrangeas were not getting enough sun. So they've been doing better the last yeah. year or two Sometimes with a little more take, sun. Yeah, so we'll see take a little more than um, how that all works. I love, this is, this is one of those little luxuries, I think, you guys, that costs nothing. And it is just such a treat to yourself. Things where you've just very carefully curated the stones mm -hmm. that you have gathered to meet this terracotta and cream colored color palette. And then you've just assembled them here in this wonderful pot, you know? And, and I love things like that. Obviously that's kind of my look, but again, I kind of wanted to put a plant there and I kept trying to say what it would be. And finally it was just like, nope, I think this is a place for an object. Yes. Uh, now someday that may move and a plant may go there. But um, uh, one of the things that I've been doing is in Oklahoma are, um, uh, Hawthorns, you know, just are not surviving. Uh -huh. And I had uh -huh. 24 at one point. Um, and so by we're the, down to about three. Yeah, okay, okay. So by the way, I'm often asked when I do public speaking, okay, what plants did we used to be able to just rely yeah. on as tried and true? And the quintess, but no longer. And but the no quintessential can. example of that are Indian hawthorns, are. not because of the heat, but because of the, the cold. cold. Right. So it's something we continually have to kind of kind of watch. So there were for. several in here and now they're all gone and, and have been gone. replaced with basically boxwood and, and more hydrangea. You know what I so. love about this time of year about May is is not even so much the roses and the peonies, the geraniums. Yes. The geraniums still aren't so hot no, you know, but to quit blooming. They haven't yep. gotten budworm yet. Yep. I love the fragrance. I just love the no, I like passion. geraniums too. That's one of those tried and true things I keep doing, so, yes. and it works. Yes, so. well, and, and even though they get hot in the summer, they come back. They do, I, so. You know, it might it may not be foot sure, but I do love the topographical interest of this, Good. and it probably helps with drainage. Well, I was gonna say, that was and, one of the reasons we kind of created a drain thing going down through here. It worked for a while, and now I've probably planted too many things. So it, uh, you know, the water collects here, but 
Yes. It's okay. Uh, and my, look at just an example of your collection. And do you shop any one place for things or you just shop oh, everywhere? Well, I will say that the most of the jars came from uh, Tuesday morning and home goods and places like that, just because again, they're not that expensive. So uh -huh. if one does get broken, right, it goes in the broken pottery garden and not, yes. you know, I don't, I don't feel like it's so precious. Um, the slag glass, I think I got in Arkansas somewhere. This is a new addition. We, uh, Roger um, found some planters and we put one back here and one in the front. Um, just again, to try to create a little more height over yes, here, yes. a little more privacy from the neighbor. Um, okay, great tip. Tip, Stuart, we need to put up the little tip thing because this is just a brilliant tip along with the boxwood that you had staged in there in a container. This is a way you can get instant privacy, uh -huh. instant height and interest, interest, textural interest. And those aren't really expensive plants. So Juniper is very inexpensive well. and yeah. I hope they grow and get big and you know, we'll yeah. do well there. Obviously yes. they're not going to grow forever there because of the size of the pot. But you know, uh, I can just see how fun would this be when you're entertaining to put huge in the cool of the evening <laughs> bouquets of sunflowers oh, in that would here be and, and eliminate little tea lights everywhere yes. would just be just be charming. Okay, and as we come down the yellow brick road. Hellebore and you've got you know, Virginia creeper is one of those things we have a love-hate relationship know, with, isn't I, it? I pretty much hate it, but I can't seem to control it. So, <laughs> well, so you might as well learn to love so it and just deal it with it. Bit, right. Yes, and just deal with it. So you like to mulch your pots. Interesting. I, I love the way you have incorporated so many more junipers in pots and containers than I remember you doing and this, in the past. That's a new thing for me. So I hope that it's not a mistake. We'll see. No, I think, I think it's I think a great I'll handle tip. The heat. Um, you know, we have bagworms, so I'm yes. going to have to stay on top of that. But um, great winter interest, but, yeah. and they're cheap. And, they, and they're it's very cheap. inexpensive. They really are. Um, um, and they've got, again, year-round yeah. interest. So here's here's my question. How do you decide where you're, I guess it, a lot of it is just the, the where the shade is, but how do you decide with all of these charming places? Well, we tend to go to the front. We like that area up there. So yeah. uh, this is really more for if we have a group, we'll come uh -huh. back here. Yeah. Um, and and it's it's a great view from inside the house. There's a window over here that we see all this. So we we enjoy this more from the inside than we do the outside because we really live over there where we now can. see I can see this as a great outdoor workspace and and we do lots of meetings at my house oh, and I could definitely that. see this yeah, as being would. a wonderful outdoor. I don't have that area. opportunity. I don't I don't meet my clients here, so <laughs> I can't work outside. Well, this um, this is where I primarily meet and it's and it's it's so nice to mm -hmm. be able to sit outside. Yeah. And this had gotten just kind of devastated in here two years ago from all of that ice we have. And it's, it's, it has a lush feel again. There's still some it's recovered things nicely. that need to happen, but, uh, but I want it to be very loose and woodsy looking. And, and it's, but it's got a very nice balance of things being very trimmed, but also very loose and mm -hmm. billowy. And again, there's more sun in here. So the hydrangeas that were planted under here, Last year bloomed really well, and they look like they might this year too. I see lots of buds on yeah, them. Yeah, this looks like a, um, an Annabelle. Uh, it is, yes. Just, and there's this area, more so than the other areas, has lovely movement to it. There's Doesn't a gentle it? breeze today, uh, and I just love the. It, it is fun to watch it, the things move in here. Yeah. So. And it's not. It's a calmer space. I you, think so. You've reined in your maximalist tendencies here. This would be a great place to meditate if you. Mm -hmm. It really if, could if be you if, do outdoor. If, if I did that sort of thing. <laughs> if you yeah, did that so. sort of thing. Um, no, it would be. Just and I finally, it. I mean, I've pretty much given up on, on color out here other than green. Um, I mean, I get those hydrangea blooms, you know, which are white, but it, it's just not a great place to grow potted flowers or things like that. But so, it contributes uh, to the beautiful serenity. But I, I really like it that it doesn't have that. So, of this space. Um, great basket mm -hmm. source. Uh, home goods. No, at home, at home. At home. Yep. What's the difference between home goods and at home? Well, at home used to be um, something pottery. What was that called? Cimarron Pottery. Remember, it's a Texas store. Oh boy, store. that was yeah. Yeah. That's so, a, but that and I think it still belongs okay. to that company. So, okay. much larger box store, lots of good stuff. Yeah. Um, and then I think Home Goods is part of the TJ Maxx family, isn't it? And I don't know. I think. Yeah, maybe you know, it is. So I should know that. I and, should know that kind of thing. A little bit. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, um, but I'm at home is a great place, a great source for a lot of stuff for decorating. Especially when you are like, sometimes I'll do, well, I had a project at OU and for a conference room and there were all these shelves that had been built when they used to collect 
binders of oh, yes. medical research and yes. all this stuff. Well, yes. Of course, all that's been dumped in the trash. So for not a whole lot of money, I was able to go to at home and get the things you know to fill these shelves to make shelves. it a decent right. looking room again. Right. Um, and, so anyway, it's a good source. And, I, for that, and so. I bet you also you're a thrifter too. Yes. I don't do a lot of. Yeah, you're more thrifting than you are these the the inexpensive stores. So, yeah, I love uh, more thrifting yeah. or. Um, but like this, I wanted because I wanted something on this table, but I wanted water to drain out of it. I didn't want to yeah. create a place for water to collect. Well, and, I think uh, there's that so. that tension. You know, the other thing for me is I'm is I and I hate it when people say, "Oh, I'm so busy." But after you, especially when you move, I am, I'm pretty busy. Yes, you are. Yeah. <laughs> we can tell. <laughs> yeah, yes. Um, my loved ones can tell. How I'm sure. I bet, you just, uh, yes. I bet you just fall into the bed at night and just pass out. So. But the thing is, is I, I have to admit, I do more online shopping now because I just I just right. don't have the time to get out. And so I think it's that nice. I'm not an absolutist about anything really I, I think it's moderation and all from multiple different sources I agree. spread your love around but when you're but my but thrifting gets my heart first. it does but when i seems like if i'm trying to thrift for a project i'm not lucky you know right. you find things when, oh, you, yeah. when you're not looking so when you find things yeah when you think oh i need to go find you know yeah. some old no, books no. or whatever they're not there that, um, and then one of the things i like about these bigger box stores you know sometimes i'm just inspired by what i see i don't know what i'm looking for yeah and they change ever quickly. I mean, it's very much, it's yeah. fast interior, fast interiors. Right. Like we talk about fast yes. fashion. Yes, um, yes. And you know, maybe not so great for the environment, but, but it works for what we have to do Well, like I so. say, val yeah. moderation in all. It is. Okay, in the dark of night, Stuart, would you help me move this <laughs> over to my house? We can do that. <laughs> when, when John's not looking, mm -hmm. right. because that is brilliant. They still make them. They just don't look like that. <laughs> yeah, I know. That one's patinaed. Yes, that, that one is I bought just, that. I guess I'm giving him, I bet that's almost been belong to me almost 40 years. Is that a I had statuary that in, world thing? I think it might've been. Yeah. And it's a very common one. You see it. Yeah. Um, and it's actually cracked, but it leaks on the edge over here. So I have to put water in almost every day. Um, but it's got great color on it. And then you, you use really successfully. Yours comes back. This has been really successful. So the one you mentioned before, which is that more miniature one, I don't think it's quite as hardy here. Okay. This is, this by the way, this is Muhlenbeckia uh, or AKA wire vine. Wire vine. And I've, there are three sizes of it, and I've only ever seen the big one on the West Coast. Um, but this size is very common here, mm -hmm. and, and it really does come back. You think it's dead, but it, but it, it really does back. come and back. It, so. And especially because yours is naturally mulched with leaves mm -hmm. and things. And and also, I would say that it, it's pretty good about handling both sun and shade. Mm -hmm. It seems to do okay here. Um, and again, it was planted when it was all shady, but... Um. And lots of textural components. I love, I may have to snap a, a little segment of well, that. You're welcome to do that. Because I love this co blue green color palette through here. And that's, you know, that's one of those things that just popped up there. And I was like, how perfect. It, it, knew, is where, perfect. it knew where to plant itself. Yes. Um, but it comes up all around. And of course, a lot of people think that's invasive and something they don't want, but um, Ooh, I'm it. happy with it. So very serendipitous. Yes. And plus, that would be something that's easy to easy to control. Okay, you, we have more to see, but I think for today, we're gonna have to end on this note. And here's here's another thing that I think is a signature touch. You know, I'm so into signature touches. Yes, you, are. you know that about me. Look over here, look what he's done with just that beautiful broken. But, and I used to have a, a rather large area of what I call the broken pottery garden. Um, it has gone away, that some of it's left. Uh, one of the things that I learned last year though, which you can't see, but I thought this, and it, someone told me, I'm not gonna say it was my idea, but when I have all these empty pots in the winter, to do something in them. So I now have a collection of broken pottery that like this one had seashells in it all winter. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, one right. on the back porch had blue pieces of broken blue stuff in it. Uh, sometimes I'll pick up my stones that are laying around and put mm -hmm. those in a pot. Yeah. And it really made I a difference. I didn't so. feel like I needed to do the whole pansy thing. and. Yeah. Uh, and the cabbages, which don't work here anymore. Right. Another thing that doesn't do well yeah. in Oklahoma. Yeah. Um, our weather's too extreme, you know, for that to work well. So um, anyway, I thought that was a great idea. And then some of it I put back in the garage and some of it I just dumped out. I have to tell we'll you come this, back to it, but. this little story uh -huh. um, and a huge gold star to my followers. That, John, you know from experience that this channel has the best followers yes, ever. They are so kind. They are so... Um, they make brilliant suggestions mm -hmm. without in any way, you know, being critical about it. They're just wonderful. But I have to share this story with you. So I found a piece of pottery in my garden and I and I discovered it and I put it up on the channel. And one of our followers 
tracked it down and told me what it was, what it was. and where it came <laughs> from. And, and so was it just buried out in the yard somewhere? Yeah. It was, just, it was just a little bit of garden archaeology. And, and it's, it's unusual for that to happen in Oklahoma. You know, on the, on the East Coast, of course, that's what happened to trash. Yes. And so when you, you go back 300 years uh -huh. and digging, you find all kinds all of kinds great of stuff. amazing We things. don't find so much like that here, but I think that's fun that you did. I yes. remember your attic treasures you found. Those were fun, oh, too. Oh, yeah, so, attic so, treasures. Yeah. Okay, uh, well, let's stop here. Okay. But can you just end by, isn't this brilliant? And then we'll just say goodbye okay. for this Sunday show. So there's some peonies blooming, which got a little rain tattered, but still have some good color. Um, that whole area along the fence over here, when I moved here, where it was... Um, um, I always have trouble with this word. What is the green thing that grows everywhere in Oklahoma? You have them down the side of your yard. Uh, you have pond hollies. No, the tall ones that are overgrown. Hollies. No, those aren't hollies along the back fence. Oh, the juniper. Juniper, the tall thank cedars. you. I always have trouble with that word. Yeah, and I don't cedars. know why. As much as I love Jen, you think I would remember juniper. You would remember, But anyway, yeah. these were junipers. And so it was very shady. They were too wide for the driveway. So finally the neighbor and I said, okay, they're going to come out. And I was like, I don't know how this is going to look, but it finally has a lush look now. And it's kind of a, just a border garden. Yeah. Um, and all kinds of things happen. You can see the larkspur has um, self-seeded because yeah. I didn't pay attention and shake them where they should have. Um, so they're all on but the edge. Uh, but they're gonna be pretty. Um, so. And one of the few places um, that I have seen Ilex or Sky Pencil Holly do very well. Uh -huh. it's, I think it can be hard to grow, but well, you those have done well. Effectively. Um, and they made it through beautiful. that horrible winter, lost every single leaf, you know, which they don't normally do. And I wow. thought these are goners and we wired them all back. Okay, so they were bit every direction. We wired uh -huh. them back together and they came back out. So wow. I think they might survive here in our, when we go down to below 15. Yeah, yeah we have um, to, sometimes so we'll we have to be rewarded for uh, our so, so many things, you know, we'll say zero or five, I know. but now in Oklahoma, you've got to get that, 15 to 20. Oh, so just that below, additional so. 15 degrees. Yeah. Thank you, darling. You're welcome. So I good to see it. you. Yes. I want to come for a tour yes. of your garden sometime soon. Well, I, yeah. I'm keeping up with you on TV okay, okay. and I drive by occasionally. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, it's, it's a work uh, in progress. And yes. like I say, people say, oh, it looks a little bit messy. Well, gardens that aren't established look a little they, bit messy. They, have, they tend to do that, don't they? It, yeah, it takes a bit. They tend to do that. Uh, things but, have to grow together. And yeah. I love that when that yeah. happens. So yeah. Good to see you. Good to see yeah. you too, Stuart. Okay. Too. Take care. Thank you. You guys have a wonderful Sunday evening.